Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to do something a little different today. There's another YouTube reaction channel called K-Pop Crash Course. It's run by Joanna and Allison, and they react to everything Korean culture, K-dramas, and K-pop. If any of that sounds interesting, go check out their channel. It is wildly entertaining. Joanna asked me to check out some Korean music, and I was like, I, I don't know where to start. I need a little bit of direction on that. And so she gave me two places to begin. Both are solo albums, solo music of BTS members. Today we're going to be kicking it off with J-Hope's solo project with the track More. According to Wikipedia, J-Hope is the rapper of BTS. But I've been told that this is rock, at least adjacent. <laughs> I don't know. As usual, we're going in a bit uninformed. I'm just going to dive in head first and see what's going on in the waters. Let's see what J-Hope is bringing to the table with more. Dang, even their logo music has pristine production. It's a really nice balance as well between the grit and heaviness that they want for the sound with the clarity of production that you would associate with K-pop. like this one attention to detail here. The, the two guitar players aren't playing. There's no guitar in the music. But the drums, despite everything being electronic, the drums have been acoustic for majority of the track, so the drummer continued to play there. I dig that. All right. So to begin with, 
as always, I think it's best to approach any art from two lenses. One is your personal lens. How does it affect you? What is your relationship to it? And the other one is what is the artist intending to do and did they execute on that well? I think this division is really important because you can put your opinion into the conversation while also keeping an understanding and appreciation of what was attempted to do, even if it wasn't necessarily your jam. And this sort of wasn't my jam, which is fine. A lot of the music we listen to on here is not anything I'm going to listen to when the camera gets turned off. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't find something to learn from it. It doesn't mean that there's uh, nothing that we can find to appreciate about it. And so I think the latter angle there is what we're going to be checking out. What they're attempting to do and did they execute on that well? And the short answer is yes, they did. If, if you don't want to watch probably like a 25 minute video, you could just turn it off here. I think they did an excellent job. Uh, they set out with a goal and absolutely demolished it. But if you want to know why I think that, keep the video rolling. So, here's what's going on here, right? A majority of this track, our verses in particular, are a type of maximal minimalism. There is very little going on, but it doesn't sound that way. We have the drum beat, repetitive. Uh, it locks in its groove and sticks with it. There's no flourish. There's no frills. There's no drum fills. It locks in the groove and sticks with it. This is not atypical for hip hop, but it is atypical for pop rock. And I think this is where some of my points that I want to bring up are really going to hover around is the distinction between genre and inspiration of doing something that a sound does and sounding like that sound. It's the difference between playing jazz and sounding jazzy. This is not a rock track, but at times it sounds like pop rock. And I think that's a really important distinction because I don't think pop rock enjoyers would enjoy this. But despite having a heavier, more aggressive tone to it that is more aligned with rock, I still think that people who enjoy hip hop or rapping over electronic music would enjoy this. Audience is important. And this is one of those moments where the drums are right on point for a hip hop track but woefully underdeveloped for a pop rock track. And it's always good to keep in mind that this is not a rock track at all. It just sounds like rock. It uses the timbres, the instruments, the tones of a rock song, but compositionally, it's not. And that's really important to keep in mind so that you don't have the wrong expectations for it. I'm really glad through that perspective that the rock comes in so late into the track then. It is in our choruses which are quite a bit shorter than the verses. It is a small percentage of the song and I think that's adequate and fits into the compositional elements of it as well. Uh, but the drum is simple, it keeps the groove, it's very utilitarian. Its purpose is to drive the time signature and the tempo of the track to keep everything aligned and to create the groove, well, sorry, the backbone to the groove, so that when our synth comes in and starts playing the syncopated rhythms, the ones that are off of the beats of the song, you get that juxtaposition between the off beats and the down beats, and there's where your groove comes from. That's where the song really hits home, is once we bring in more of these instruments, we get this groove going on, and then 
the icing on the cake is all the stuff that sits on the outskirts of that the woo that sits on uh, you know at the end of every four bars of our verse um the ornamental sounds that come in every once in a while and sort of punctuate and line up with something I believe that he's saying. It sort of lines up that way more so than anything musically. It's all those little one-off ideas that help give the song a bit of character and flourish because the core foundation isn't. It is, in all intents and purposes, a rhythm section, no different well, a little bit different, but in the same category of the rhythm section in a jazz track. It's there to outline the song and be the foundation, whereas everything else is done on top of it to give it its character, its body, its DNA. And through that lens, our vocalist sits on top of everything. This is something I came in expecting. It is pop regardless of the country it comes from and pop in general tends to be vocal heavy i think the vocals need some time to grow on me i like rapping but the thing that i really love about rapping tends to be one more technical rappers Eminem, Tech 9 uh, you know, anybody who can really get some interesting flows going on. And this is more of a laid-back, chill type of uh, rhythmic flow. The diversity is there, but it's more of a, interestingly enough, a melodic diversity. He chooses to hit different inflections on different notes, and it feels very much like speech. I'm not actually aiming to hit specific tones or pitches while I speak, but there is an ebb and flow to the pitches in my speech right now. It is not entirely monotone because if I talk like that, it would be boring. And so his rapping comes off as very natural. It isn't technically impressive, but it is soothing to listen to. And like I said, it, I think it would just take me some time to get to that. But the other thing that I really love about rap tends to be wordsmithing. Looking at the alliteration of words, rhyme schemes, interline rhyming, um, uh, you know, double entendres, metaphor. It's the poetic side of it. And I'm never going to pick that up on a first time listen, regardless of the language of the lyrics. It's just not something I listen for. I'm very music oriented. I'm listening to the instruments. I'm listening to the musicality of the vocals, not the words being said generally. But the fact that it is also, at least the couple of words I heard, a mix of Korean and English, I wasn't going to pick them up either. So the two things that I tend to look forward to in most rappers that I enjoy aren't present here, at least for a first time listen. Um, and like I said, I think I'm just going to need some time to get adjusted to that. But I do like, as I mentioned, his flow. There's a an ease to it. He makes it look effortless to do what he does. And of course, it isn't. This dude trains his vocals uh, probably pretty rigorously. I imagine that most idol groups are, they, they have a ton of practice to go into everything of their performance. But certainly, you know, you got to be a cream of the crop to be in BTS, at least vocals. So, but he makes it effortless. And I think that's what's really impressive about it. There is one elephant in the room here. I don't normally talk about this, but I feel like it's impossible to bring up modern Korean pop music without this. The music video itself requires so much conversation beyond both my skill and what I really want to give presence to this. This is a music channel after all, but the camera work, the cinematography, the effects, the framing, the pacing, 
the sheer fact that a lot of this looked like lengthy one-take shots with extensive camera work. In fact, right there at the beginning, it is burnt into my mind. There was some really intricate camera movement that was zooming out while like sweeping in a circular motion alongside movement of J-Hope. They were moving in tandem as if it was like a first person perspective of a dance between two people. It was harmonious, symbiotic. I don't think that his movements would have looked as interesting without the camera panning, and the camera panning would have just been nausea-inducing without him as a focal point in the frame, making the movements he was. It is a massively intricate undertaking just from that perspective, and to think that a lot of the shots in here featured that same dedication. Not to mention it did seem, at least to me, I, I didn't see any stitching in the editing, which yeah, stitching is getting really clever these days, so maybe there still is some in there. But again, it's an extended scene. Imagine if you're on the sixth or seventh camera movement and something is out of place, something comes into frame that shouldn't, uh, J-Hope makes a mistake, the camera dude makes, you know, just anything happens. And now you have to restart the whole thing and it is so meticulous and perfect. Shooting the music video must have been just as difficult as performing it. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I think goes into the cin cinematography and uh, performance elements of the music video itself that is beyond my knowledge and what, you know, what I really want to dedicate uh, a portion of my video to, but it is exceptionally impressive, and I do think when the video is over, when I turn the camera off, I'm going to go back and watch it again. It's only three minutes anyways and be there specifically for the visual information of it all. I also noticed that the drummer was wearing, uh, I think, prosthetic makeup, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but it's very interesting when I think of boy bands, when I think of K-pop bands, I think of uh, beauty, you know, the, the ultimate uh, visual appearance uh, standards. And uh, the drummer was sort of going against that. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, especially with, you know, J-Hope at the forefront of this thing. He is like the face of K-pop. Or he's part of the face of K-pop. BTS, as far as I I don't know a lot of K-pop bands, but I know BTS. So they're pretty big. Um, and you, you just kind of assume that they would just find more pretty people to be in the band. And maybe they did. And he's just wearing prosthetic makeup. I don't know. It, it really stood out to me as an interesting choice for that. Um, to wrap all this up, we have to talk about production real quick. As I mentioned, even the production on the logo chime for the record label or whatever at the very beginning was immaculate. It sounded so crisp and clean. Every sound was perfectly placed in the sound sphere, whether it was off to the left or the right, directly in front, a big booming bass. When, when your logo chime sounds good, you know you're in, you're in a good place for production, no matter what they produce. And this song was no different. What I like about it isn't just the crispness and the cleanness of it all, but it's also a bit of the grit. Being that they wanted a bit of this raw sound, bringing in the hip-hop elements, bringing in the pop-rock elements, the distorted guitars, they made sure that they could capture that energy without ruining the cleanliness of the sound so that it could still appeal to people who enjoy BTS. Production is really important. It is the color palette of the song. People like color. You can certainly use sepia and monotone and all sorts of restricted palettes in order to achieve a specific effect, but our dumb monkey brains really love bright colors <laughs> and contrast and dynamic elements. Um, we like clarity. And so 
I thought it was really awesome. And I'm really curious, you know, I, I'm not a producer. My engineering skills, I'm still working on. How do you go about doing this where you can bring in the grit, but you don't lose that clarity? It seems impossible to me. They're opposing forces. You're trying to make it clean and dirty at the same time. And I think they effectively got that. The production is exceptionally high fidelity, but it has a bit of that rock grit. However, I did notice the guitar tone is a strange choice. I don't think we would ever hear a pop punk band ever use that guitar tone. But as usual, it was a fantastic choice for this song. Again, this is a hip hop track, not a rock track. And so some irregularities like that, that wouldn't make sense in a rock world, make sense in here. It's a timbre that fits the rest of the sounds in the song, even if it feels a bit out of place against the distortion and compression on the guitars. I'm going to take a second to hit some lyrics, and then we're going to wrap this video up. All right, so... You all know the tagline catchphrase of the channel is be critical, not cynical. It's about creating conversation, not about just randomly putting things down. We don't call anything trash, and we try to see the positive in as much as we can. I have a really tough time not reading these lyrics cynically. On the surface, it's about somebody who absolutely has a passion for music. And there are some really cool things going on as far as theme. At the very beginning, he says, yeah, I'm thirsty. I need you. Surfing on the beat, I'm a fish in water. Soak up the music. This water theme that we have in our opening lines also is utilized to bring everything together while also showcasing the raw passion this person has. They're thirsty for music. They can't not make it. In order to show that they're in their element, he says, I'm a fish in water. He says, soak up my music, surfing on the beat. All these things come together, and I, I really like that. So like I said, I like the poetic side of rap. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of vocal delivery styles can get into this like rapping does. There's just so much room for syllables. You can put so many words in a short time when you're rapping. You don't really get that affordance when you're singing melodically. And a lot of this song though is about that. He says, "Got to keep my passion. I got to keep going." Um. He says that not everything has been good, a work that comes from bumping and failing, but I make it mine, I make it right. It's my reason for living my joy in life, it's my driving force, right? I've made mistakes in the past, but I keep going because music is my life. And the chorus says, shout it out, I want more, right? Because I want some more. It's, it's about wanting to keep making music. And like from that perspective, I'm totally on board with this. As a fellow musician and composer, though quite a bit less well-known than J-Hope, um, music is, it's my passion, it's my life, it's, it's in every part of my day. I really love this perspective. But there's something in here that just doesn't quite click with me and I think it's because it feels too I really don't know if I want to go in this direction because it is a cynical take it's looking at the possible darker side of the situation at the end of the day this is a manufactured group that's not to say that I don't think J-Hope has a passion for music But this song feels a bit forced to me from that perspective. Especially, and it may be a translational thing, but there is a repeated element of how half of his life has been dedicated to his work. Work gets brought up a few times. 
at one point even says, my work makes me breathe. It makes me feel alive. And given, I might be projecting a bit, given American work culture. There seems to be a positive spin on working your life away in this because it's your passion. I don't know. Again, it, it might just be a translational thing where the word work pops up more often than it should be, but it stops being a thing about the passion and shifts over to being about work. And then it has this subliminal message to it to, I worked my whole life. I've, you know, I, <laughs> I spent a lot of time. I didn't really have a lot of free time, but it's my passion. I've enjoyed it. You should do this too. You should be, you want to be like me, right? I'm popular. I'm J-Hope. And so what I really enjoyed at the beginning kind of feels sinister by the end of the track. It feels positive and bouncy and anthemic, but a little creepy towards the end. Especially that line I mentioned, my work gives me breath, it makes me feel alive. Right before that, there's a little bit of humbling to it all. Fame and wealth are not everything, I know. It's my work that gives me life. It's just, I really hope, oh, actually, I take this back. My work makes me breathe is in English. That That's not a translation thing. So work was specifically chosen for that line. I don't... The positive side of me wants to say, yes, it's a song about an artist who loves making music and wanted to make a song about that. And I can really get on board with that. There's a couple lines in here that just feel a bit darker than that. But since I highly doubt this is a provable theory of mine, that there is a subliminal message of you should keep working half your life because it will bring you happiness to make you feel alive. I don't want to dwell on it too much. The rest of the track is great. There's even a really neat line in here. Um, a bit of a... It's a transition phrase that I really love. Uh, it says, kick snare in my ears, I hear it hit that, my body goes straight without stopping, make my mixtape, even if feedback comes, get back. It's about uh, the process of iteration, right? About getting hyped about something you just made and it not being as good as you wanted. You get some feedback on it, literally and, literally? Musical feedback and constructive feedback, right? You hear the music's not great. Maybe there's some production issue with it that needs to get fixed. But also your producer's like, hey, maybe we should try this. He's like, I get back to it, right? It's about this drive. It's about this passion, and then there's a word, Kit Kat, which is the rhyme for get back. It's a very soft rhyme, but it works in that same area. We transition it. He says, um, anyone who eats something sweet is sweet to me. We push this into mutual relationships are so beneficial, which is a really interesting line. Feels like a strange translation. I wonder what the more raw translation, a literal translation is there. But it seems to be about taking this from... Uh, you know, this is my passion, this is what I want to do, this is my work, you know, I, I get all this stuff, uh, this feedback, I go back, I give it everything I want, and to kind of take that back through this uh, sweet candy um, transition line to take us into, actually, you know, this is all a group effort. And I really like that. It's a cool little transition line that incorporates a larger theme to it. Because a lot of this song is me, 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 I, I, I which is fine, but I like that acknowledgement right there. It is a group effort. You got to have those relationships, keep you grounded, uh, hopefully to have a little bit of a life outside of work, but also because this song wasn't put together just by J-Hope. You had a whole team around it, especially when you bring in the people who uh, 
do the choreo for the dance and the producers, the directors, everyone who did the music video. Like, it is a huge deal. I feel like I've rambled on long enough about this. Those are my thoughts on J-Hope's More. I enjoyed it. I'm intrigued. This song specifically isn't something I would go out of my way to listen to, but I'm glad that I've had a chance to explore it. Let me know your thoughts, though. Did you enjoy it? Was there anything that maybe you saw that I didn't? Maybe you heard and I didn't? Anything you'd like to expand on what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just want to give me a little bit more context on stuff like this. As I mentioned, unlike J-Hope, I'm a fish out of water when listening to music like this. <laughs> uh... When you're done commenting, head up into the description box. You're going to find a link for Linktree up there. It's going to take you to this menu. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Also, in the description, I'm going to leave a link to K-Pop Crash Course if you're interested, interested in checking out that channel. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of some of y'all's favorite tracks from 2023. And we're going to check out some... Uh, oh, no, we're not going to wrap things up. Yes, we are. Golly, I'm losing track of the days. <laughs> we're going to wrap things up, and we're going to check out some brand new music. All right, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.